Kia ora, good evening. The plan was to have a leaders' debate, but instead Christchurch became the scene of another intriguing political possibility. The event was scuppered when Chris Hipkins got COVID, though he's accusing Christopher Luxon of pulling out because Luxon refuses to find an alternative date. But as Lloyd Burr reports, Luxon's also being urged to pull out of something else, the Islam seat, to make way for the Opportunities Party and shut out Winston Peters. Selfie after selfie in Christchurch. Up the wires, brother. The city Christopher Luxon grew up in. Well, nice to meet you, mate. Here but a city he won't debate in. Hey, Rebecca, it's Chris Luxon here. How are you? His phone calls with the press to reschedule tonight's debate probably weren't as cheery. It's still a no from him. The Prime Minister has COVID, OK? It is what it is. Chris Hipkins is isolating with COVID until Friday and wants to shift the staple election fixture to next week. I've said that I'll make myself available as soon as I'm out of isolation. So any time between Friday and Thursday next week, uh, I'll go to Christchurch in order to be able to debate Christopher Luxon. Why can't you adapt to a new date? Well, we're in the last week of a campaign and it's pretty hectic and it's pretty busy and we've looked at it and we can't make it work. That is the number one selling shoe in the world. One tick blue on the shoe. The same for the party vote in Ireland is what the Opportunity Party, or TOP, wants in order to get leader Raf Manji into Parliament. I'm going to win Ireland anyway, but I think from an insurance perspective it makes a lot of sense. And I think people need and want a new party in Parliament. Laying down this challenge to Luxon. It's basically, it's, it's Winston or Raf. Who do you want to deal with? Calling on National to stand aside in Ireland so Top gets well, into Parliament with a handful of MPs, meaning Luxon wouldn't have to rely on Winston Peters if that's what's needed to form a government. So what's your message to Luxon? Yeah, be strategic. Electorate deals aren't new. Nationals done them with United Future and ACT before, most notably in 2011 with the infamous cup of tea with John Banks, more recently with David Seymour. What's the advice that Seymour's given you? Yeah, he said, you're in the same position I was in 2017. So he said, look, you've just got to work hard in Ireland and try and get across the line. That strategy is a bit naive. You, you don't win a seat because someone else says you should. You win a seat because the voters want you to represent them. In his case, Nationals candidate Paul Goldsmith didn't campaign in Epsom, making it easier for Seymour. Nationals candidate in Ireland is this guy, Hamish Campbell, but Luxon says he's not budging to make way for Raf Manji. Winston or Raf? Yeah, and my, my message to New Zealanders 11 days out from an election is they're in charge, they're in control. You wouldn't stand aside in order to get Winston, keep Winston out of Parliament? No, look, we're, we're doing a really good ground campaign, we've got a lot of support and we're going to continue to work hard up to the 14th. I think it's probably a lack of strategic thinking, not just about this election but about future elections. <laughs> Luxon not only upsetting the Opportunities Party, but also this wee Canterbury kid. Well, Lloyd Burr joins us now from Christchurch. Kia ora, Lloyd. So, National and Labour, they aren't just squabbling over debate gate. Yeah, there's some squabbling and wobbling going on on both sides of the political spectrum. On the one side, the Council of Trade Unions, the CTU, that's aligned with Labour. They put out an email over the weekend saying that if National was elected, they're going to get rid of a whole lot of different things, uh, like the 10 days' worth of sick leave every single year, uh, free prescriptions, they were going to get rid of them altogether, the winter energy payments. There was a few other things as well, which is uh, completely wrong. And the CTU came out and said, yeah, whoopsie, that was a whoopsie. We shouldn't have sent that out. And then today we had National, uh, National's Chris Bishop. He's kind of like their political attack dog, he came out and said, well, Chris Hipkins, if he wins the election, he's going to get rolled as leader, uh, he's going to get kicked out of office, and then they're going to implement a wealth tax and a capital gains tax. And this came after its MP, Ingrid Leary, suggested that she liked a wealth tax, despite saying that she liked the leader as well, a bit of a captain's call. So we've got all of these allegations, uh, this dirt mud singing going on behind the scenes. The temperature behind the scenes, sorry, the temperature does seem to be uh, heating up a little bit. I just re recommend that they just lower that temperature a bit, maybe go home, have a cup of tea and a bit of a lie down. <laughs> Good advice, Lloyd. Thanks so much.